Hey, welcome. Uh, what the? F welcome back. This is Slide Drift. My name is Timon, and in this video, I am going to install uh, this <clears throat> kids' washing machine. It's a kids' washing machine because it's basically just big enough to wash one pair of kids' socks. <laughs> it's like a small one. I think it's about a three kilo or three point five kilo. I got it from everyone's favorite discount store China 90% of Kate's head shakes at me are uh, because of this because I got it uh, about a year ago when I thought I was gonna install it and I didn't and for a year it's been sitting in the quarter berth just rolling around so I just tested it it actually still works tested it as in plugged it in I want to install it right there which is a shame because this is my little go-to intro and outro video area. Yeah, I'm gonna put it right there. It's a little bit above the water line, um, and so the water can naturally just drain out without having it having to pump it sort of uphill, if you will. So that's that, and I might actually be able to wash my clothes at the end of this week. All right, let's get started. Today we learn. This is the spot where I basically want it. Get a bit of marine ply, make a backing for it. Actually tab it to whatever's underneath here and obviously here with fiberglass and like really reinforce it so it's super solid. And then attach it to the backing plate and then just plumb it all in. Whoa, there is not much room in there. Have a look at this. Yeah, not much room at all. It goes as deep as my hand. I've had uh, friends and family joke that uh, it'll be big enough for one bed sheet and it probably is. It's pretty small. Pretty small. Pretty small. Alright, what do we got here? It is a three kilo washing machine. It's also a dryer. I forgot about that. Good on you. Passed him on. It reckons it consumes 24 litres of water per wash. We'll be checking that. Hot wash. Hot wash at high temperature can completely eliminate bacteria and mites, so you can wear it comfortable. Here's another good one. Do not use the washing machine to wash non-clothing items, then in brackets, shoes, potatoes, cabbage, kelp, etc. Right, got it. Really don't like looking behind things. There's there's usually problems hiding behind there. Here's a fun little fact written on there is reveal fins for bifolding windows. Way back when I was building the MOG. Awesome straight edge. Using marine grade plywood and marine susceptible tools, I cut out the backing plate and then marked up exactly where it needs to sit so it's perpendicular with the water line. This is the only spirit level that I've got. <laughs> I actually threw my spirit level out. That's good. Because I live in a boat and I thought I wouldn't need it. So I thought it was to go like that. So I thought I had plenty of room, but it actually goes like that. Top. <laughs> Top. Tim, I didn't read the instructions. You flaming galah. I should be able to just sneak it in, but it is going to be tight, 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 tight. After marking up and drilling the attachment holes, I prepped the surfaces that were gonna receive epoxy and fiberglass. These little mixing cups, I like to use alfoil. I'll like double wrap it and then that way once I'm done with that batch I can just pull the alfoil out and throw it in the bin and reuse the cup and then you just go again. I don't use these measurements on the side here. Everything's done with these sort of mixed ratio pump packs. So you just do one pump for both the hardener and the resin. Just remember when fiberglassing onto plywood, the plywood naturally absorbs some of the resin, so you need to apply a couple of coats or as many coats as you need until the plywood stops absorbing and is fully saturated. And at that point, you can start the fiberglass over the top. Otherwise, it's not gonna adhere properly. Using thick and epoxy, I applied a nice curved fillet to the hard edges. That way, the fiberglass has a nice curved edge to adhere to. I used four sheets of 400 gram double bias. I think that will be plenty on both the top and the bottom. 
At this point I had a couple of days to kill while all that dried nice and hard. So to be productive I took this time to make some shelves and install some fans up in the V-Birth. Okay, welcome to the V-Birth and my bed. So the current setup in here is one light for either side. We never ever use these because they are the wrong colour temperature, they are way too bright. They just don't make a nice environment inside here. I don't have any replacements right now, I didn't find any in time, so they'll have to stay for now, but that should be a pretty easy fix when I'm ready to swap them out. This USB adapter, both sides will be changing to a socket sort of type with a conventional USB-A and a USB-C instead of two USB-As which is up there right now. And then these will should go in the corner. I have also got two of these Sirocco 2 12 or 24 volt fans. They don't use much power. I had these in the MOG. If you guys have been watching since then, I really appreciate it. They don't use much power. They're relatively quiet and they can articulate in every direction. Australian dollars, they were $170 each. I feel like that's worth it. I really like them. And so I'm go I've got two of them and I'm going to install sort of one there and one on the opposite side up there. So for all of last summer up until now, I have been using this little Ryobi 18 volt fan. I've got two of them. Not sure if the microphone will pick that up, but it's got a bit of a rattle to it. The other one that I've got is even worse. These have done the job really well. They're just sort of sitting in the bed and I kick them and fall over and they're not working properly. So it'll be nice to have a more permanent version. All right, let's get this done. <laughs> Running wires from the back of the boat up to the V-berth would have been the biggest pain in my dick. But lucky for me, the existing wires were pretty beefy and so all I had to do was splice these new bits and pieces in. And voila, the final product. I'm real happy with those. So as far as paint is concerned, I'm gonna wait until I've got a lot of painting to do to do it all in once. Also, I am pressed for time if I really wanna to get to Fiji this winter. Australian winter, obviously, Southern Hemisphere. I'd rather be surfing in Fiji than have a nice little painted shelf there. But yeah, let me show you how these work. Got the fan on, one setting, second setting third setting and there's also a timer that's three hours six hours nine hours usb you guys know how that works all right and the crappy light i hate that light pretty solid now i've got this brass skin fitting and also this ball valve so now it's just time to install this bad boy and also put a little hole in the side of the boat, as low as possible, so it tends to want to just drain out. But not below the waterline because, yeah, I don't want to put stuff below the waterline if I don't have to. Just before I go and drill this hole, my boat is solid fiberglass. Does anyone want to have a guess in how thick the side of my hull is? If you guessed eight and a half mil, you'd be right. Here's a hot tip that I just found out that I didn't know. Acetone is heavier than air. So if it's not stored properly, just like LPG or gas, it can sink into the bottom of your bilge and you can get some pretty spectacular fireworks. Yeah, big bada boom. Bada boom. <laughs> big ba boom, big bada boom. Anyway, now I know and you know. Now that I've got the ball valve fitted on, I've loosened the nut way off. Got a good amount of gap in there that I can push this in and out. And I've got, in Australia, the main sealant we use is Sikaflex. So I've got Sikaflex 295 UV. There is a very, very messy sick of flex job and all of this space here is eventually going to get filled in like the toolbox lives up here but it's got to be strapped down every time we sail 
and yeah this space just isn't very usable so I'm not too fussed with being able to see that right now because yeah in the future this all will be done alarm oh my gosh this bloody bit of it. I'll never cease to be amazed at how difficult the most simplest of tasks are on a boat. You basically need to pull the whole boat apart just to run one tiny little thing. It is mental. It is mental in here. Looks so good. And all up there, clearly labeled. Loving it. Oh my god, that was it. That was so difficult. Oh man, I look like I've been attacked by a cat. The bolts are in and it's fixed on. Also, can you notice anything wrong with this picture? There is no way I'm getting that cover on there. So during the process I did cut off the downpipe that was for the old diesel inlet. Rather than removing the whole thing and then fiberglassing in on the deck, I'll do that at, at a later stage. And that's why there's this gross little patch there. But painting is a pretty low priority right now, so that's going to have to wait. Okay, the final piece of the puzzle has finally arrived. I needed one of these, it's a half inch female end to a John Guest fitting because I didn't have enough room in between the outlet of this and the inside of the hull. Why is it that when you need something so urgently and you get it express posted from an hour and a half away, they send it for a couple of laps of Australia. But uh, anyway, I've got it now. Install this, fill up the water again so my water is full. Take this for a test run and then once it's finished, fill up the water again and measure how much I'm filling up to take sort of a crude estimate of how much this is using. Okay, the moment of truth. 1.64 kilograms of stuff. One sock. <laughs> I mean, I'd put two in there, but only one's gonna come out anyway, right? Imagine I'll hear the, uh, the water pump. Maybe it's one of those ones that don't, doesn't use water. Hey! <laughs> Clean clothes! Rightio, how much water did it use? Bang on 24. And that is that. At the moment, I've got it on the drying mode. I haven't fully figured it out yet, but it is pulling 1.4 kilowatts, which my solar panels are almost bringing in right now. They're just a touch under, so that's... So sun, solar panel, charge controller, inverter, dryer to dry clothes. It's like, it's the most roundabout way of uh, having a clothesline. Not using any power, which is pretty cool. So I need to get this video out. I do apologize that I haven't been uploading a few videos lately. Hopefully I can get more consistent from now on. Um, a special thanks to my Patreons, you guys rock. In the future, I'll give you an update in how this is going, but so far, so far so good, hey. It is a bit small, but that's what it's supposed to be because I'm on a pretty small boat, so. So that's exciting. I, now I do not need to go to the laundromat. I can wash my clothes in a bucket, but I don't really do that unless I need to. One step closer to being fully off grid, the water maker. I've got all the bits, but it's just lower on my priority list right now, but it will be coming up pretty shortly. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye. <laughs>